So you own a boat or an RV and you've decided that you want to buy these flexible, lightweight solar panels and install them. But now which one are you going to choose? I'm going to give you the relevant knowledge which you can use to understand yourself which panels are better than other ones. Knowledge is power, right? Before we go ahead, let me introduce myself. My name is Jesse, I'm a renewable energy engineer and I'm specialized in battery-based off-grid solar energy systems. I have run several companies in the design and installation of off-grid solar energy systems and I have held the position of energy officer with the United Nations. I decided to found the company Solar Solution through which I share my knowledge and expertise. I do that through personal support as well as through online videos and articles. Okay, so let's get started. How do we make you an expert on flexible solar panel? I've divided it into five topics I like to be organized. First one is efficiency. Second one is the effect of temperature on flexible solar panels. We'll discuss the weight, the cost price, and the warranty and durability. First topic, efficiency. Now, I hope you're paying attention because if you understand this information, then you're way ahead of the rest. The efficiency of a solar panel is expressed as the amount of electricity it produces out of the total amount of sunlight that hits the panel. It is therefore expressed with a unit of percentage. Now, why this is important for you as a boat or RV owner is that, at least I assume, that you want to use as little space as possible to produce the largest amount of electricity possible. So how do you know what the efficiency is of a certain panel that you're looking at? Not that difficult. Look in the specification sheet, which is normally a two or three page document. Look at the second page and it will tell you solar module efficiency or module efficiency of the unit of percentage. This is the value that you want to know. So highlight it and remember it, important. Now, when I say specification sheet, please don't get scared away. It's not rocket science. When you're looking online for panels, then somewhere on the bottom of the page, you know, where it says the price or order, etc., it will always give you this button that says download specification sheet, click on it, you get this PDF document, two, three pages, that's all. So you probably want to know by now what kind of efficiencies you can expect. Well, they're roughly in the range of 13 to 17%. So what this means, for example, is that if sun power with an equivalent of 100 watts would hit your solar panel, it would then produce 17 watts of electricity. Makes sense, right? If you cannot find the efficiency of the specific panel that you're looking at in the specification sheet, first of all, I would start to worry a little bit because it's one of the most important things for a panel. So if the manufacturer doesn't mention it, uh, I think that's questionable. But the good news is you can always calculate it yourself. You can use this formula. It's not rocket science. Or if you feel lazy, you can go to my website. There's a free calculator there. I'll provide the link in the description below. Next topic. Temperature and the effect it has on the performance of flexible solar panels. So by now you understand that different panels can have different energy efficiency ratings. But you should also be aware of other performance factors for the flexible solar panels. And you're probably already aware that there's an inverse linear proportional relationship between the temperature and the output of the panel. Or to say it in less nerdy engineering terms, as the panel heats up, it performs less. As the panel is colder, it performs better. Two things I want to tell you. The first thing, the great thing about flexible panels is that you can mount them on curved surfaces on your deck or on your roof, or you can mount them with zippers to your canvas, etc. But the disadvantage of this style of mounting is that you often have less airflow behind the panel. And then what happens if the sun hits the panel, the panel can heat up substantially and that reduces the output of the panel. The second thing I would like you to remember about this is that the extent to which flexible solar panels reduce their output as the panel heats up differs substantially between brands. The good thing to know about this is that it's quite easy to figure out what the difference is between the two panels. And again, you can look in the second page of the specification sheet where you're looking for a certain figure which is called the temperature coefficient Pmax in percentage per degree Celsius. What is key to remember about this is that you want this value to be as low as possible. So the energy efficiency of the panel, which, which we discussed before, should be as high as possible, but the temperature coefficient should be as low as possible. Okay, we're making good progress now. The third topic, the weight of flexible solar panels. They have the undeniable advantage that they're much lighter than rigid panels. As a rule of thumb, you can say that flexible panels will give you four times the amount of output per unit of weight, per kg or per pound. 
Now something worth mentioning about this is that while rigid solar panels come with their frame included, you know, the aluminum frame that goes around it, obviously flexible panels don't have that. They normally come with holes, the uh, grommet holes and four points on six points. But if you would decide yourself that you're going to mount it on some kind of a frame, then actually the advantage of the weight shifts a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Okay, the next topic, the price of flexible solar panels. I'm sure everybody is interested in this. How do you get the best deal? The conventional, straightforward way of comparing solar panels on a price by price basis is taking the price that you'll pay for it, divided by the rated power output of the panel, and in this way compare panels among each other. In my experience, most flexible solar panels come in the range of two to five dollars per watt peak. And if you're interested, if you compare it to rigid solar panels, rigids are between 50 cents and two dollars per watt peak. By the way, whenever I'm referring to prices, I'm always using US dollar values, just to keep it simple. And uh, you'll just have to convert it to your own currency. That brings us to the last topic, durability and warranty, flexible solar panels. In my opinion, the quality of flexible panels is generally not all that great. I've seen them fail within a year, completely fail within a year. And the maximum I've seen is that continuous use within acceptable margins, they have been performing up to five years. I would be very interested if you have seen anything perform better than that, longer than that, please let me know. I'd be very interested to hear that from you. And you know, a general guideline is go for the established brands. They tend to use more rugged materials such as the ETFE and don't go for the cheapest, cheapest ones out there. When we look at the warranty of flexible solar panels, they generally go up to maximum five years. And this is for the power output warranty. I have seen cases where they go up to 25 years, but the interesting thing is that you also have the other, the workmanship and material warranty, which is always less than the output warranty. And they often have limitations included and they can even include things such as UV degradation or you stepping accidentally on the panel and then the warranty is void. So I guess my recommendation would be if you want to rely on the warranties, read the small letters. Okay, so now a question for you. If there are any other specific topics that you're interested in regarding battery-based solar energy systems, let me know in the comments below and I can use it as inspiration to produce new video content. And of course, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. I would always appreciate that. Or write something in the comments below. I'm looking forward to hear from you. Okay, thanks and see you in the next video.